So today we're looking at the podzolic order, which is one of the one of the orders that we associate with uh, with forest vegetation. There, the central concept of this order is that there's significant accumulations of organic matter uh, in combination with iron and aluminum moving down through the soil profile and accumulating in what's called a podzolic B horizon. And so these soils, in terms of where they're found, it's almost always in uh, in a forested environment in a cool or very cold hum but humid climate, which is certainly uh, well uh, describes well the, the, the area that we're in today. In terms of how these soils form, uh, basically the, we call the process by which the iron and aluminum uh, accumulates in the B horizon the process of podzolization, which is a combination of, uh, of eluviation and illuviation through the soil profile. So we've got um, basically, the basic idea is that we've got the inputs or additions of organic matter that we see associated with, uh, with forest vegetation. So a lot of above ground inputs of, of organic matter associated with the leaf litter. So we'll, have, we'll see that there's quite a, a, a significant LFH layer uh, associated with this, this horizon. And so the nature of that, or, that organic matter though, is that it's quite acidic and so particularly uh, got quite a high degree of fulvic acids. So these, uh, these contribute to the weathering of the parent material. That weathering releases iron and aluminum. The, uh, the organic acids, the fulvic acids, uh, basically forms, form chelates with, the, the, with, the, uh, with the, the metals, and those move down, those become more soluble and move down through the profile. As I indicated, we've got a lot of precipitation falling in this particular environment. And so once, the, once those associations form, that material moves down through the, through the profile, and as it's basically transferred or translocated down through the profile, it continues to pick up more and more iron and aluminum until it's basically, um, it, it, until it can't accumulate anymore, at which point it precipitates out. And so we end up with this very clear zone of deposition within the soil profile. And that would be the general, uh, sort of the, the general way that we would describe the process of podzolization. Now there's, podzolization is sort of, uh, What's one of those processes that is not uh, perfectly understood in terms of the in, in terms of uh, pedogenesis, but this is sort of the, the the general description in terms of how the material moves down, and so uh, in turn, depending on the nature of the inputs, uh, the nature of the organic matter additions, and the particular uh, rate of movement through the profile, and the nature of the parent material itself, the the exact uh, great groups that we see within this are going to vary, but that's the basic idea behind it. So in terms of the factors of soil formation, I, I've alluded to some of the important ones already. Basically climate and uh, vegetation are, the, are among the, the most important. So species like Sitka spruce are really key because the, the leaf litter, or the, in this case the needle uh, litter that is deposited by the Sitka spruce is very acidic in nature, and as that decomposes, it basically releases a lot of, a lot of these acids that can, in, can then uh, serve to weather the minerals and uh, move down through the, the profile. In addition, we need to have that significant amount of precipitation, so that cool, wet climate that allows that material to move down, uh, to, to be trans transported down through the profile. The parent material is really, really important here in the, in the sense that you almost never see a podzolic soil on a very fine textured soil. It's pretty much always a fairly sandy, uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a fine sand, but generally a, a sandier soil. Uh, it has to be uh, uh, allow for that, that degree of movement through the profile. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the relief, however, or the topography, you tend to see these on a range of, of, of slope positions. Once, when you have the, the particular combination of, of uh, vegetation, um, precipitation, and parent material, then you, you do tend to see these on a range of slope positions from where we are, which is quite level. And you see them, albeit in a much uh, shallower profile, you do see them on much steeper slopes overall as well. Uh, I guess that would be the the big dis the, the the major factors, and I, and that just to to emphasize that it is that that the role of precipitation is the one thing that really distinguishes the, the occurrence of podzolic soils. Uh, that with the warmer climate and the, the the precipitation allows for the formation of podzolic podzolic soils here, whereas throughout much of the the boreal forest in. Uh, 
in the prairie provinces, for example, or in, in the interior of Canada, we don't see a lot of podzolic soils. So these tend to be concentrated primarily in British Columbia, and then again in the eastern part of in the eastern part of Canada, where you have a, a slightly milder climate and uh, greater precipitation inputs to allow for that for that weathering and translocation through the soil profile.